One of the best new shows in 2019 is the HBO miniseries Chernobyl. Only five episodes is an incredible watch. And as of this recording, it's the highest rated show on IMDb. That's pretty incredible and it's well deserved. Now the Chernobyl disaster was the worst nuclear disaster in history and it resulted in a lot of things. It was a catalyst for the dissolution of the Soviet Union, made a lot of people look at their own power plants and judge the safety and it paved the road for safer power plants in the future. It also led to something else and that something else is the continued and the increased fear of nuclear energy. Now the fear of nuclear energy predates Chernobyl and it's still seen today in monster flicks. I think they just made a new Godzilla and it's seen in a lot of shows some of which are my favorite. And that's not to downplay the effects of radiation. If you watch the show, it goes into very graphic details about what happens to the body when it's exposed to that level of radiation. It's very upfront, very in your face about it. And that frightens people. It's that power that we harness for energy and it's that power that makes people fear nuclear energy. So that's what I wanna talk about. I wanna talk about nuclear energy. I wanna talk about what happens to our body when we're affected by radiation. Let's talk about radiation first. What happens to our body when we're affected by radiation? Newsflash, you're always affected by radiation. Every day there's just background radiation. You might get more radiation if you go to a doctor's office and we give you a CT or we give you a chest x-ray or if you go flying. And I don't mean those TSA scanners, I mean when you're up in the air. When you're up in the air, there's less atmosphere to block cosmic rays, so you get more radiation. And that's okay. If you're under a certain level, if you're under a certain threshold, then you're at no more increased risk of anything than the general population. So baseline, low levels of radiation is completely normal. That's just minor league stuff. But we're not talking about minor league stuff, we're talking about freaking Chernobyl. What happens when your body is exposed to high levels of radiation? When you're exposed to high levels of radiation, then you can suffer what we call acute radiation syndrome, or ARS. Radiation, especially ionizing radiation, can damage the DNA in your cells either directly or it can interact with water and create free radicals and those can damage your cells indirectly. Whatever the case, the DNA in your cells can be damaged and that can cause mutations or they can be damaged so much that your cell just dies. And radiation likes to affect cells that are constantly multiplying. Why? Because when you're constantly multiplying, your DNA is more out in the open, more exposed, more likely to be affected by radiation. So it affects cells that are constantly multiplying. We call these labile cells. What cells in our bodies are labile cells? What cells in our bodies are constantly multiplying. Well, your skin is constantly multiplying. You're constantly making more skin cells and shedding skin cells. Your bone marrow has stem cells there, constantly making cells that we find in our blood. The cells of your gastrointestinal tract, your GI tract, are considered labile cells. So radiation affects those areas of your body and that's what you'll see. The lining of your gastrointestinal tract will start to decay and slough off. You'll get pain, diarrhea, that was seen, nausea, vomiting, bleeding. You can have infections that go through your now weakened bowel wall, cause infections, cause perforations, cause dead bowel. It can affect your bone marrow. You stop making platelets, which are needed for blood clotting, so your blood doesn't clot. It becomes thin, like you're taking blood thinners. So you start to bleed everywhere. That was seen in the show. You also stop making immune cells, so you're at increased risk of infection. But the most horrifying symptom is, of course, what happens to your skin. Your skin will start to die at severe doses. It almost looks like you're being mummified. Your skin will go from red and swollen to ulcers, to blisters, to when it actually does die, it'll turn black. And that was also seen in the show. And if you survive all this, you're not out of the woods yet. It can cause blood cancers like leukemia. Leukemia is the highest cancer risk after radiation exposure. It can cause thyroid cancer. Why does it cause thyroid cancer? Your thyroid loves to pick up iodine to produce thyroid hormone, which is rich in iodine. Well, if there's radioactive iodine in the air, then it'll pick that radioactive iodine in. Uh-oh, that's not good. So what we do, and what's seen in the show is you give iodine tablets, so your thyroid will pick up those iodine tablets instead of the radioactive iodine. All right, so all these things are kind of seen in the show. And this information comes from historical data and medical research, not from personal experience, because I've never seen a patient with acute radiation syndrome. And I can guarantee that 99.99% of my colleagues have never seen a patient with acute radiation syndrome. And that leads me to my bigger point. And that point is that nuclear disasters are incredibly rare. Nuclear energy is incredibly rare safe. What about the deaths caused by nuclear disasters? Well, Chernobyl, like I said, was the worst nuclear disaster in history. And that direct blast and acute radiation syndrome that we talked about killed about 30 to 60 people, or about the same amount of people that die in coal mines every year. Not globally, just in Chile. How about long-term deaths, like through leukemia and thyroid cancer, you know, the things I was talking about? Well, the number is disputed, but a generally accepted number is about 4,000, which is similar to the amount of people that die in coal mines every year, not globally, just in China in 2006. The deaths caused by nuclear is so small, nuclear causes so few deaths that it almost seems unethical 
to use other energy sources. What about toxic waste? Nuclear energy doesn't produce a lot of toxic waste. You can take all the waste of all the power plants in all the United States and fit it in a football stadium. And you might argue it's not about the amount of waste, it's about contamination and pollution. I would argue that the pollution and contamination from other fuel sources like fossil fuels has done more to put us in danger due to climate change than nuclear energy ever has. And if you don't wanna look at the big picture, if you don't wanna look at climate change, just look locally. Look at the polluted air that's been around for decades, centuries even. Look at the oil pipelines that are pumping millions of gallons of oil into our ocean every year. There's a Taylor oil spill that's pumping 750 barrels of oil every day, even today. It's pumping 750 barrels even today with no idea of when it's closed, no accountability. There was an Alto Canyon leak that pumped so much methane in the air, you could put a million cars on the road and it would do less pollution than that leak. So what about the cancer risk? Again, I would argue that the cancer risk is not unique to nuclear energy. So why fear only nuclear energy? And people do. People fear only nuclear energy. The only thing that's disliked more than nuclear energy is coal. That means more people support offshore drilling and fracking than they do nuclear energy. It's very clear that we need to get off fossil fuels. And nuclear energy has been a big part of that. Nuclear energy produces about 20% of our energy demands. And you might look at other very popular sources like wind and solar. Well, wind only makes about 6%, solar less than 2%. I bet you didn't know wind made that little, I didn't either. I bet you didn't know nuclear made that much, I didn't either. Now, nuclear is not perfect, it always costs more than it's supposed to, it always takes longer than it's supposed to to build a plant. And with the decreasing cost of things like solar and increased battery technology, it might make more sense, it might be more profitable to look at these other energy sources. So this video is not to pine over nuclear energy. So what was the point of this video? The point of this video was to show that the fear of nuclear energy was unsubstantiated. And this fear has existed for decades and has caused unnecessary environmental harm and unnecessary deaths. See, you're always gonna be faced with controversial topics that are gonna be so horrifying, so frightening, so visceral that pulls out all these primal emotions in you. And when you're watching Chernobyl, when you're watching someone decay in front of you, bleed out of air orifice, then you might feel some of these emotions. That makes it very difficult to think Logically, we like to think that we're logical people, that we're rational people, that we're objective people, that we look at the data and the facts and we use these to make informed decisions. And if you believe that, then it's important that you challenge yourself with these controversial topics every now and then and see if you actually can rise above them. And nuclear energy is a controversial topic. So I hope that when you're watching this beautifully written, heart-wrenching, tear-jerking series that is Chernobyl, I hope that you realize that you're more likely to watch a mini series on a nuclear disaster than to ever be involved in one. Thanks.